One thing that I watch religiously and something that I found is 100% something that I can count on to predict fish behavior every period of the year. That doesn't matter if it's the fall time when fish start to move in the back of the creeks or if it's uh, like right now, the end of winter, moving into spring, the summertime. One thing you can always count on is the photo period. Photo period is probably the most, it is the most consistent thing that you can count on. I don't care what the water temperature is, I don't care what moon phase it is, I don't care how cold or how warm it is outside, fish move on the photo period religiously because forage does. The length of day, photo period, when, we, when I say photo period, I'm talking about the length of day, it's consistent. It's been the same since the beginning of time, it doesn't matter, cold, hot, or indifferent. Photo period is always the same, the length of day. When we get into December, January, those are our shortest days of the entire year. And then from that point on, the days start to get longer. And that light period is what triggers fish to move. That's what triggers fish to say, hey, it's time to start moving to the banks. It's time to start thinking about spawning. Same thing for your, for your food foragers, for, your, for crawdad and for, uh, for shad and all the food forage in the ecosystem, everything is operating on the time clock of photo period, the length of day. So I really pay closer attention. And, you know, if we want to prioritize water temperature, photo period, moon phase, uh, you know, just overall environmental factors, for me, photo period is at the top of that list. I don't care what's going on when I get to the end of February or really mid-February, March, Every, all of my efforts are going to go towards the bank because I know that fish are coming that way regardless of how cold the water temperature is. That's something I've watched. It, the water can be 42 degrees or it can be 52 degrees. Somewhere there's going to be some fish moving towards the bank looking to do their pre-spawn deal. When we're talking about there's so many different levels of pre-spawn to talk about, you know, in my mind, I see pre-spawn, we have an early pre-spawn where fish are starting to get on little creek turn bends, you know, those little little turns in, in a bank, a little bit of deeper water. That typically happens where I live in February, March. That's always your first, first pre-spawn on, on a clear water reservoir, you know, just a regular, normal lake reservoir. Fishing in lakes and reservoirs, the first stage of pre-spawn, you know, they kind of pre-spawn out deep and then they start to move up. They get in these little creek turns and creek bends. Then you progress on, they kind of start to, to progress even farther. As the days start to get longer, they get on the little flats and they start to get on a little isolated cover. That's some of the funnest fishing you'll ever have. And then even here at home, fish like to suspend under docks and sun. They kind of get out in the middle of the coves and they just sun, just soak up those sun rays that penetrate the water column as the days get longer and the, and the water starts to rise. Uh, and then after that, they start to actually do the spawn. So those are all levels of pre-spawn, where they're pre-spawning out deep, then they move shallow, they're on creek turns, that's another level of pre-spawn, and then they get a little isolated cover, vertical structure, what I like to target this time of the year, that that's another level of pre-spawn before they actually start to, to fan out beds and lay eggs. And all those levels, those different incremental uh, periods are always triggered by the length of day first because uh, i'm telling you i've seen it from 42 degrees to 55 to 60 degrees it doesn't matter we get 60 degree days in december where i live and the fish still stay out deep but as soon as you get to february march and you get you bust out and got a 55 degree day and you know it's not really that cold at night those fish they go on the move so that shows me that photo period is at the top of the list in priority and triggering fish behavior. Of course, things like water temperature are very, very important and high on the list as well. Water temperature, if it's April and the water's still hovering around in the low 50s, fish are not gonna be real, real apt to get out there and, and be very active and, and spawn. But as soon as that water temperature gets in where I live, upper 50s, 58, 60 degrees, and this late March, April, I can almost promise you, you better be looking. But it's still not quite as, as predictable as the photo period. Water temperature is gonna be the second 
most important thing that I start to watch. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of guys talk about the moon phase, and that's one that I'm not, I'm not real strong on, on watching. I'll just be honest with you. I've seen some of my, my best fishing days on the water for spawning, centered around the spawn, and sight fishing have been when there's no moon uh, or a waning moon or a long ways from a full moon. That's one that I just don't have the evidence to, to say to you that, that it matters a whole bunch. So if I had to prioritize what I need to look for when you're talking about fishing around the spawn, number one is gonna be photo period. Number two is gonna be water temperature and weather, overall environmental conditions. And last on my list is gonna be probably the moon phase. So watch those three things when you're talking about the pre-spawn moving into the spring and that's a good way to predict the bass behavior on just about any fishery that you're going to be fishing on